<laughs> British bulldog. How can he not be? I mean, you know, he's the local yeah. boy. Now, he... oh, you're from England. I get it I now. Know. So there's. <laughs> I know you thought I was from Australia for several months. But... Good day, mate. Yeah, good day, mate. Well, <laughs> look at that. I'm actually yeah. drinking this absolute piddle as well. It's all. I, I'm sorry. It's all I had left in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, Bulldog is announced as Owen's replacement. Now, uh, I told you, do you, do you remember the story why Owen actually legitimately wasn't in the arena? No, I didn't hear this. His second daughter, his, sorry, second child, his first daughter, I think Athena, I hope I'm saying uh, the, the right name, was being born. And I think she was born like the day before. And something that really surprised me is that Vince McMahon and J.J. Dillon let him take a day off or, you know, basically almost missed the pay-per-view for the birth of his child, because normally I wouldn't think they'd give a rat's ass if, if there was a child born or not. See, that's the ironic part with Vince. That really, I mean, this is going to sound crazy to people. Uh, when my dad got sick uh, in 19, it was like December of 1990, I'm in WWF, and having a fairly decent run, you know, making good money. And I can't say a negative thing about Vince or the promotion at that time. And I went to Vince really apprehensive. I, I, but my dad was going to be need to go on oxygen, uh, uh, chronic uh, obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, and a weakened heart, uh, heart failure. And so he was going to be put on oxygen. Well, living alone, especially with smokers that get COPD, the danger is they're going to sneak and smoke anyway, right? And when you have oxygen in the house, especially a tank of oxygen, that's a bomb. Yeah. Uh, liquid uh, liquid oxygen is, is highly explosive. And so he couldn't live alone. And I had to come off. And I remember it was in Niagara Falls. I went and called, told Vince I had to talk to him about something personal. And he we walked over. Uh, the Niagara Falls uh, arena is attached to the convention center. And we walked over, and they had a, one of these rooms set up with all the tables were open and plates and everything on it, ready for a reception or something. And we walked over, and we sat down. We had a really, really good conversation for like an hour. And I finally said to him, so I, I need to be able to be home to take care of my dad. And his exact words to me were, you've been a great employee since you've been here. Uh, doors always open to come back. Uh, he said, but family comes first. You go home and take care of your dad. And, you, you know, so like, with what you just said, doesn't surprise me. Uh, but in the next breath, you know, he might say like, if you know, well, my dad's funeral tomorrow. Well, we need you raw. You know, there's this weird dichotomy in Vince that way. Um, you know, he ironically had paid for, I had heard allegedly for Bam Bam's funeral really? and, and I, I, now the, this, the story gets convoluted. I heard more of the story from, um, uh, the second Doink the clown. Oh God. It's so bad with names again. Uh, not Ray Apollo. Anyway. Ray Apollo, yes. Jesus, um, where did I pull that one and, out from, Craig? Yeah, right. Okay, and home run there by the uh, by the English English kid, uh, Australian. Thank you very much with the <laughs> so. Uh, you know he, uh, uh, yeah. I, I mean, you know he uh, he he was good. Vince was good in some stuff that way. In other ways, he was he was not. You know, you, you know, paying for Bam Bam. Then I heard from Ray that some people pitched in money. And then, like, Vince wanted some of it back. I mean, it's just a really weird, convoluted story. But the fact that Vince paid for it, regardless of what the follow-up stuff is, it shows you somewhere in there this guy's got a heart. <laughs> you know, it's, it's uh, it, you know, it, you know, and I'm sure to him, it's probably, hey, this guy saved WrestleMania, whatever the number was, 12 or whatever it was. And, uh, uh, you know, like doing that and really didn't want the fanfare for it. And I'd heard that before that went public from a guy that was really good friends with Bam Bam and all of his Polly Baikow, uh, had come to legends of the ring and said, Hey, you know, Vince didn't want anybody to know this, but, and I, and I didn't know it to be truth then, you know, from just one guy saying it, but then you started hearing the story more and more. And then like Ray telling you the follow-up story to, okay, the guys that pitched in at the club, like, you know, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so uh, there was something else to like. I think, oh, that's what it was. That's what it was. The guy that collected the money at the bar, like, went and gave a lot of the money back. But then <laughs> WWE sent him a ten ninety nine 
for for the money. So you got to cl- declare it on your taxes. That's what it was. It was some, <laughs> like I, I, I told me the rest of that story. And I said, why does that not surprise me in the least? It's just <laughs> too much, but yeah. <laughs> 